Rivian CEO just gave a really big update to investors, gave a lot of detail about what the company is developing for 2024 into 2026 when the R2 line of vehicles is expected to be starting deliveries out of their Georgia plant. And investors have really been wondering not only when is R2 coming, but when is the R1 line going to get to profitability? Is the company going to have enough cash to get R2 launched without having to raise a whole bunch of new capital? So we got some peeks into that today. I want to go through a number of quotes from the CEO, from the CFO, and get to some of the background of where Rivian's balance sheet sits right now and what sort of production guidance we should look for for 2024, because that's what might be a little bit disappointing for investors that were expecting a lot of growth next year. My name is Travis Holliam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. Check out fool.com slash ASYM for their top 10 stocks to buy right now. I'm going to start this discussion with a little bit of background on what Rivian is going to produce this year and where the balance sheet sits, because I think that's important when looking into the future. This is a look at some of the highlights from the most recent quarter. And what we see is management increasing their production guidance to 54,000 vehicles. That was increased throughout the year a couple of times. So really solid seeing production increase throughout the year. But Rivian is still a startup company losing about $4 billion on an adjusted EBITDA basis. Now, the CFO said that they were getting closer to being contribution margin positive for the R1 line of vehicles. They're already there for the electric delivery vehicles, but we may need to see some of the upgrades that are going to happen in 2024, but before that happens. But I'll get to some of that in just a little bit. CapEx is going to be about a billion dollars this year, and then the, ex the expectation is it's going to be about $2 billion a year as the Georgia plant is, is built, and that's where that R2 line is going to be. From a balance sheet perspective, Rivian is in a little bit tougher position, about $9.2 billion in cash on the balance sheet right now. And there is also debt on the balance sheet, $2.7 billion in long-term debt. So this is starting to be a more leveraged company. And the CFO didn't say that they weren't going to need to raise more capital in the future. So it seems like that's going to be on the table. Basically said they were going to be opportunistic in keeping that balance sheet strong. So the question for investors and something that I have really hesitated with Rivian is, are they going to be able to get to cash flow positive because they basically need to get that R2 line up and running before they're going to be able to get to free cash flow positive. And you've got to build out that plant. That's about a $5 billion plant. Doesn't leave a lot of runway when you consider the amount of cash that's being burnt in operations right now. But let's get to a couple of the comments that she gave us today. The first comment that I thought was really telling was about the company's batteries and upgrades that are being made to batteries. Every now, every electric vehicle maker is making upgrades to batteries, whether it's changing the chemistry, reducing costs. But Rivian has, in, has made a number of changes in just the past year and expects to do more of that in the next year. This is the full comment, but I'll just highlight that the standard battery pack, is, which is the smallest battery pack, is going to be coming out for R1. That's going to allow them to sell vehicles closer to that $70,000 mark. And then they're going to be introducing new battery packs next year for R1 vehicles, these are expected to reduce costs by thousands of dollars. So right now, Rivian is really focused on pulling every piece of cost they can out of these vehicles. And this is another step in that direction. But there's some side effects of some of these introductions and the simplification that's going on with the electronics and then the wiring as well. So that's the downside. So that's the next piece of downside because 2024 might not be as, as strong as a lot of investors expected. In this quote, she says that the cadence next year is going to have is going to be basically normal production in Q1. There's going to be a long shutdown in the second quarter that will impact volumes in not only the second quarter, but also the third quarter. And everything is going to be shut down because what they're upgrading is going to be impacting both the electric delivery vehicle and then the entire R1 platform. So expect production to be down in Q2 and then not returning to a normalized level until probably into Q4. When does Rivian get to this 85,000 unit run rate for the R1 vehicles? That's really has, that really has been the benchmark that management has laid out for quite a while now. Well, I'm going to get to that in just a second. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now.
This is the quote from McDonough about where production is going to be heading towards that 85,000 unit number. And you can see that we're probably not going to be there by the end of 2024. She says that we're going to be making significant headway as we work through Q4. That's Q4 2024. But there could be significant constraints. So it likely won't be until 2025 till they get to that 85,000 unit runway. Now, remember that is 85,000 units for the R1 line of vehicles. The rest of the 150,000 units in the current Norman, Illinois plant are going to be allocated to the electric delivery vehicle. Now on the EDV side, they ended the exclusive agreement with Amazon. So they're going to be selling that to more customers. Now, what exactly does that mean? We will have to see because I thought it was a really good deal that Amazon was going to be buying up to 100,000 vehicles from Rivian. But that ended early, so I don't know exactly how to read into that because maybe Amazon didn't demand that many vehicles. Maybe they weren't working out as expected. But I think ultimately uh, it's surprising that Amazon didn't want all of those vehicles right away. So keep an eye on that because after producing what is expected to be 54,000 vehicles in 2023, you would expect that number to grow in 2024, but that's probably not going to be the case. That means that those losses are going to continue throughout 2024 puts more and more burden on that cash that's on the balance sheet. As we look out to 2026, that's where things get a little bit more exciting for Rivian because next year and 2025 are going to be about building that R2 plant. And R2 is going to be a, be a vehicle that's expected to be in the forty to $60,000 range. And McDonough said that we're going to see it early in 2024. For now, they're saying that there's going to be 200,000 units of production with the R2 plant in Georgia with the ability to add another 2,000, 200,000 units of production. So from an R1 and R2 perspective, this means that the R2 vehicle is going to be at two to three times the production of the R1 vehicle. If it's able to be produced profitably, this could be a really good contribution to the bottom line for Rivian. There were questions in this conference about demand. McDonough kind of sidestepped those because I think that's ultimately the biggest question for the electric vehicle market as we've seen demand for vehicles overall go down and some of that demand that was really high for electric vehicles during the pandemic shift over to ICE vehicles in the last year or so. There's a lot of questions about if there's going to be demand for every single vehicle that Rivian can make at their price point. I think the combination of those two things is where you get to a challenging position for Rivian not a ton of people can afford a seventy to hundred thousand dollar vehicle, so are they going to be able to sell eighty five thousand of those a year? We will see, but that's why they also need that r two vehicle to be produced. Seems like things are going in the right direction there, so incremental steps forward for Rivian. The market didn't really react much to this news today, but I thought the fact that production is going to be down pretty significantly from what might have been expected in twenty twenty four is really big news. Although the balance of that is they are taking cost out of vehicles. So we should see a little bit of a cost reduction and hopefully get to that contribution margin positive number maybe in 2024. And that would be a much more sustainable point than where they're at today. That's the benchmarks to look for for 2024. Looking out to 2026, we'll see if R2 is going to be available then. That's a pretty short time frame to build an entirely new greenfield plant and a completely new product but that's still what they have targeted right now. So pretty big updates from Rivian today. Like I said, the market didn't react a whole lot, but I think this is absolutely what investors are going to be want to, are going to want to focus on. Is what's, what's, so what did you think about this update and the quotes from the CFO? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next.